following video material is being used for educational purposes only. We do not own the rights to any of these videos. However, we are here to encourage and enhance your knowledge on the sport of track and field. As always, sit back, relax, and enjoy. And of course, welcome to Raised. Hi guys. <laughs> okay. I got my energy drink there. Hey, that's kind of cool. My energy drink matches my Picasso hat. Y'all know I love this hat. This is one of the kind of hat. This is the race take hat. All right, so today, we're going to keep things calm and mellow, even though I got my energy drink. So, if you was on the channel yesterday, you know there was a lot of riffraff, a lot of back and forth about information. You know, and then a couple of people hit me up. It was like, Ray, what is this biomechanics stuff that you're talking about? They was like, no, I know what it's talking about. Well, I know what you're talking about, Ray. But what is it that you're talking about? I said, if you know what I'm talking about, why you ask me what I'm talking about? But I got what they was trying to say. So I said, you know what? Today, today we're going to do just a little quick educational video on how I discovered biomechanics. Okay? I'm gonna tell y'all what happened, people. I'm gonna tell y'all what happened. The year was 2012, okay? Year 2012, I was having a pretty decent season. I was down there with Coach Stratton, me and Wallace Spearman and Darvis Patton and Jared Cunningham and Tyrone Edgar. And, you know, we had a pretty decent camp going on. I was been probably the best shape of my life leading up to Olympic trials. We were at practice the Monday before we get ready to go. I'm blazing, you know, I'm hitting my 150s and, and 14, 9, 15 flash. These, these are not fabricated stories. I was really running it fast, too. Practice, I'm, I'm blasting out 9, 8s and stuff. So the Monday before we get ready to go, you know, I'm doing a 180 and hamstring completely go. Paya, gone. Bye-bye. Gone, 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 gone. Here's what happened. The reason why I had, even Coach Stratton was like, Ray, something different about you. You're looking really, really good. Here's what happened. I started watching some videos of Johan and I started noticing him doing some little stuff with his feet that wasn't normal. So I said, you know what? I'm gonna go to practice and try this Johan thing. The first time I tried it, I went from my normal 15, 8, 15, 9s to immediately 15, 1. And I remember that day of practice. I remember that day of practice. I said, Ray, just try it. I said, Ray, just try it. Just trust it. See what happens. I tried it, I trusted it, and it did not feel like I was running fast, people, it did. It did not feel like I was running fast. I was like, I don't know if I'm doing it right, but I just kept doing what I saw Johan doing. I just kept keeping my feet like right here in front, clawing the ground, and then kept everything tight. I literally mimicked everything I saw Johan doing. Came across the line, Coach Stratton was like 15 fours. What? There was the first one. I said, okay, okay, Jack. I'm gonna do it again, Coach. The second one. hi y'all, 15 one. What? Okay. He said, Ray, you look real good. He was like, I don't know what's going on, but you look real good. I said, Coach, I was watching some film. He was like, okay, keep it up. My last one. He said, Ray, we're going to do one more. We're supposed to do four, we're going to do one more. <laughs> Hi, y'all. 14 9. Ray, you are ready. This is, this is the Friday before I'm supposed to leave to go to the Olympic trials. Okay? Uh. The following Monday in practice, I did the same thing, blew my hamstring out at 180. Now, here's the thing that happened. Well, I was doing the 180. Blew my hamstring out at 150, but I finished the 180. Here's the one thing that happened. I remember when it went out at 150, I was like, it's done. It's gone. It popped. I still was able to roll through the, the finish line and hit a 180, right? I remember Doc ran over to me. Wallace ran over to me. And they, you know, Doc picked me up. He was like, you all right? And I was like, Doc, mm -mm, I heard it pop. 
And so I didn't want to panic because it's the week, it's the Monday I was supposed to go to, to the trials for London, but I didn't want to panic. Um, He said, Ray, you was rolling. He said, do you know you still ran 18 after pulling the hamstring? I was like, yeah. But here's the reason I'm telling y'all all this, people. I learned something at that moment. I learned something through my injury because at that point, of course, we know what happened after that. I got to the 2012 Olympic trials. Boo -doo -doo -doo, went down. Here's what also happened. That was my contract year. Nike chose to no Nike chose to drop me. They just chose to drop me. It was like, Ray, we can't afford to keep you. You know, when you hurt, yada yada yada. So at that point in time, people, I lost all my money. And because I was a young dumb athlete, I had two cars then, I had a condo, three-story condo. I lost all my money. And I lost all my money. I pretty much lost everything. We'll fast forward to a year later. A year later, I was literally sleeping in a warehouse. Um, this warehouse that I was sleeping in happened to be where I had opened up a music studio. This is 2012, yeah. Where I had actually opened up a music studio. So I thought I lost everything. I was sleeping in my music studio that I had at the time. The guy who was letting me rent it out, you know, he I told him my situation. He was like, well, Ray, you can stay there, yada, yada, yada. And then he let me stay there for three months. After three months, he was like, Ray, I need the space. He literally was like, Ray, I need the space. You know, I'm sorry. Not like he was being rude, but he was like, you know, he even helped me, you know. But anyway, so that's, that's the story. That was when I was homeless, okay? So at that point in time, I was homeless. Uh, I was, you know, living in, in the, little, the, little, the little warehouse, I was bathing in the sink, but I didn't care because I had realized something. I was like, there's something left for me to do in track and field. So... I kept practicing. That's why I went missing, people. I went missing because I was damn homeless, but at the same time, I was studying, okay? Fast forward, 2013, I'm living with one of my friends. I don't read, really got myself back together because nobody, I don't have any money. Nobody's training me. I don't have any coaches that got to train myself. So I'm working out, working out, I'm working out. I'm at SMU working out. And then somebody says, hey man, you need to, um, you, you need to, you probably need to meet with Ken. And I'm like, who the hell is Ken? You know, Ken. It's like, Ken can probably help you because, you know, I was working out on the track by myself and some other people was like, man, Ray, you can get on back into it. Make a long story short, I met Ken. And then once I met Ken, I met another guy. Another guy said, hey, man, you know, um, Nigeria is looking for American athletes to switch over if you have any type of Nigerian her heritage or whatever. I said, well, actually, coincidentally, my grandmother, my, no, let me say it right, it's five greats. My great time five. Grandma Caroline came over here to America on a slave ship from Nigeria. My mom actually did the research. But anyway, so at this point, things started to fall together, okay? What a lot of people don't know is when I ran at the African Championships in 2013 and I ran in Nigeria and all that stuff, I was running for money because I actually was, was sleeping on my homeboy's couch. So anyway, I get down there, I get back to America, and I'm like, hey, I got to get with Ken, man. I have to get with this Ken guy because Ken had gave me a few nuggets and the nuggets he had gave me matched what I was doing before I tore my hamstring doing the Johan thing. So, so, so I get with Ken. Ken comes, starts to come out to my practices. You know, he's starting to watch some stuff. He's like, Ray, I can fix you and get you back where you need to be at. I say, man, I love that, Jack. How we do that? He say, it's called biomechanics. It's some stuff I had to show you that you're doing wrong. I said, okay, well, let's do that. First thing Ken did was this right here. Ken took me to the track. He said, first Ray, I need to film you as you are. And then after I film you as you are, I'm gonna show you everything that you're doing wrong and how to fix it. Here's that video. My name is Ken Clark. Here we are analyzing Ray Edwards' starting technique. We used automatic timing to get Ray's three and 10 meter times and used both regular and 300 Hertz video to analyze his mechanics. Ray's an elite level sprinter. So all the factors we are analyzing will be discussed in comparison to what he needs to do to reach gold medal status. Gold medal winners reach the 3 meter mark in 0.72 seconds and the 10 meter mark in approximately 1.72 seconds. Ray's 3 meter time was 0.83 seconds and his 10 meter time was 1.83 seconds. Therefore, Ray is actually as fast as the gold medal winner from 3 to 10 meters, but he can improve his time to 3 meters by a tenth of a second. This means we are looking for any small technique changes in the first couple of steps to help him make up this tenth of a second.
Next, we will analyze Ray's mechanics at key points throughout the first two steps, compared to the gold medal model developed by Dr. Ralph Mann of USA Track and Field. All of the images and timing information are reported from Dr. Mann's book, The Mechanics of Sprinting and Hurdling. First, we will look at Ray's set position. All of his angles look pretty similar to the model. He could perhaps lean a little bit further forward, but this is dependent on comfort. Next, we will look at the left foot clearing the rear block. The gold medal goal time is to clear the rear block in 0.14 seconds, and Ray hits this time exactly. Most of his lower body and torso angles look pretty similar to the model, although there are some slight differences with the arms. Next, we will look at when the left foot and when the ankle crosses the right knee. Most of his ankle angles look pretty similar to the model, although his left foot is slightly too high off the ground. A lower carry through may be beneficial. Next, we will look at his right foot clearing the front block. The gold medal goal time is to clear the front block in 0.28 seconds, and Ray nearly hits this goal time. Most of his angles look pretty similar to the model, but his left knee is slightly more bent than the model, and his left foot is slightly too high off the ground. This will cause his flight time after block clearance to be longer than necessary, and this is one potential area for improvement. Next, we will look at step one touchdown. Ray's flight time after block clearance was 0.11 seconds, which is longer than the gold medal model. This is an area where his start can get faster. If Ray can direct his forces more horizontally and have a lower recovery, he will improve this step in the race. Additionally, Ray's right foot could be closer to the ground, similar to the Jamaican toe drag technique. One good thing is that Ray's front, front side thigh mechanics are actually better than the model at this point, and this leads to a very short step one ground contact time. Next we will look at step one ankle cross. The gold medal goal time is to hit this position in 0.42 seconds, and Ray nearly hits this time. All of his angles look pretty similar to the model. Next we will look at step one takeoff. Ray's step one ground contact time was excellent, and was actually slightly faster than the model. At takeoff, his right hip and knee are slightly more flexed than the model, causing the right foot to be slightly higher off the ground. Next we will look at step two touchdown. Ray's flight time after step one was 0.07 seconds, which is very close to the model. All of his angles look pretty similar. Ray's thigh front side mechanics are actually better than the model at this point, and this leads to a very short step two ground contact time. Next we will look at step two ankle cross. Ray looks excellent at this position and all of his angles look pretty similar to the model. Next we'll look at step two takeoff. Ray's step two ground contact time was good, although slightly slower than the gold medal model. Ray looks good at takeoff and all of his angles are pretty similar to the model. Finally, we'll look at step three touchdown. Ray's flight time after step two was 0.09 seconds, which is slightly slower than the gold medal model. Again, he has a little bit of excessive aerial time during all of the first couple of steps. Otherwise, all of his angles look pretty similar to the model. Ray is an elite sprinter, and if he can reduce his time in the first three meters of the race, he will be on a gold medal pace. Since Ray's ground contact times are very good, the most effective way for him to improve his start time is to lower his aerial time and to increase his stride frequency during the first two steps. He can do this by directing his forces more horizontally and having lower recovery during these first few steps. Now, see that? That was when it started to click. <laughs> yeah, Jack, that was the story started changing. Cause I was like, oh shit, he don't show me everything, bro. He don't show me way too much. I said, okay, Clint, I like this. I like this, Clint. Come in, Ken, how do you do this? He said, now Ray, I gotta take you to the track. We got some work to do. I said, let's get it then. He said, we got a lot of work to do, but I'm sure what to do, and I'm gonna teach you how to do it. I said, let's go, let's get it. So then Ken started showing me. He started taking me to the track. And then I saw, you see this video right here is when I'm trying to get it, but don't quite get it yet. Check this video out. This is after, you know, me and Ken working together a couple months. He teach me the biomechanics stuff and how to actually move. He giving me cues on how to make my feet be low and stuff. I ain't quite got it yet, but I'm working on it. Check this one out.
See? It's coming together, but it ain't together yet. So then I said, King, what we got going on? He said, Ray, there's one more thing we got to do, though. Before you figure this part out, the reason why you ain't figuring out the part out the blocks is because you ain't figured out the part about how to run. What the hell do you mean how to run? Ray, I got to show you how to run. I got to teach you how to create a series of takeoffs instead of a series of landings. Because, Ray, you're still landing. Sprint is a series of takeoffs. I said, Ken, I like that. How do we do that? He said, Ray, I'm going to show you how to ride the bike. And in order for you to ride the bike, we got a goal. This goal is right now there's a treadmill record. Ray, you are going to break that record. And you are going to run 8.8 .8 meters per second. He said, Ray, the only way this is going to happen is if you listen to everything I am teaching you. I said, okay, let's get it, Jack. Let's get it, Jack. Y'all don't know how many times I failed at this treadmill run. Weeks, months before he actually said, this is the way you have to do it, Ray. You're not going to be able to hit this record if you do not do it the way I'm telling you to do it. You must pick your foot up and put your foot here. I said, okay, kid, I got it. Here's that video. I told y'all, now it's starting to come together. You see that knee ash? You see that knee ash on that treadmill? That's how I learned knee ash. Ken taught me knee ash. Ken taught me knee ash. And now he taught me knee ash, I said, Ken, I got it. I figured it out. Let's go back to the track. We go into the track. I said, Ken, I'm ready to do this thing again. Ha -ha I figured it out. See? See? Now you see the progression of it? See the progression of it? Then I said, okay, Ken. I Guess what, Ken? They done gave me a shot, baby. Somehow they heard about the running and the stuff I was getting back to doing. They done gave me a shot. It's a little bit of booty, 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 booty meat in Brazil, but I think I'm going to try what, what you've been teaching me, Ken. Here's me trying it. Here's me practicing because what I did a lot of y'all, if y'all know, I did a lot of filming every time I ran to send back to Ken so he can look at it and tell me what's right and wrong. Here's that video from when I was in Brazil. This is when I really figured it out. Knee ash out the blocks. Check it out. Needless to say, I won that track me. I went like 10-10. And I was like, I'm back, baby. I'm back. But I went back, back yet. So then Nigeria was like, Ray, we want you. Come on over here. We want to see what you got. I guess to Nigeria. Ha ha ya! Ten O's back on the clock, baby. So then, first of all, I'm going to put a disclaimer out there about this video you're about to watch. It is 52 degrees outside. So don't let these times confuse you, okay? It's cold as shit out there. I literally was drinking coffee throughout the whole warm up area. But... I learned something on this day. I said, Ray, trust everything Ken has taught you about front side mechanics. Move from your hamstrings out the block like he's told you. I said, Ray, this is your opportunity. You have not been on the world stage, on any stage in over what? Three years. Here's your opportunity. You're in a whole nother team, whole nother country. Put together what you've learned. And here's what happened.
You see? You see? Now, Jamanda was on some other stuff. Truth be told, you. Jamanda was gone, all right? And plus, he, that 52 didn't bother him because he's from over there. Like, I was like, all right. And I also tried to shut it down a little bit, which I did shut it down a little bit, but you probably didn't see that. But anyway, the point I'm trying to make is I learned something that day. I said, shit, this front side mechanic shit works. I've never been out front out of the blocks ever. I don't give a damn who it is, Jack. I'm always in the race. I've never separated like that. I learned something. I learned how to separate, but then I also learned that, okay, Ray, there's more to it. That whole part about riding the bicycle that Ken was telling you about, you got to learn now when to put that into action during the race. And I did. Here's the problem, though. When I did learn it and I did put it all together, it was for real 2016. We all, well, some of us know what happened. If you don't know what happened, I'll tell you one day, but I didn't get to run in Rio, but that's another story. I put everything together for that one run. And what I also learned was I learned not how to run like the Jamaican. That's also the reason why people never really heard from me after 2013 when I went with Nigeria because I only started training for championships. And there's a video from 2016, actually, I should put it up, but I'm not, of me doing an interview in Nigeria saying exactly that. Like, no, 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 I don't train for seasons anymore. That tears my body up. I only train for championships. And that is why... When I was in Nigeria, every championship I made, I qualified for. We'll get into that one day later on about that part. But I just want to do this little video, this little, this little informational video to explain to y'all. This is why I go so hard about biomechanics. Biomechanics literally put me in front of y'all right now. Had I not been working on that track when I was homeless, had I not been with my friends out there who also ran track and said, hey, you can get with Ken, I wouldn't even be doing this video right now. So that's why when I'm sitting here praising the fact that the Jamaicans do this and the Jamaicans do that, yada, 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 because I know that shit works. It worked for me. It, you just saw it. You just saw it, exactly. And then you heard the man even using stuff like similar to the Jamaican toe drag. Like, he even says it all the time. Like, it's right there. So, I know what y'all want to do now. Now you want me to explain to you how to do it. Guess what? I'm not. You know why? Because that's why I get paid the big bucks in Dallas. You got to come to Dallas and find out how to do it, baby. Goodbye.